No matter the reason for divorce, emotions will definitely run high. And while it's okay to have hard feelings, parents need to also find a way to focus on the kids. Divorced parents who are doing right by their kids know that their child's stability, happiness, and well-being matters. And therefore should make the transition easier for the kids. Before I get into the signs of divorced parents who are doing right by their kids, if you're already a subscriber, thank you for your support. And if you're new here, my name is Sharifa Namsisi. I'm a marriage counselor, life coach, and CBT therapist at Let's Fix It Individual and Couples Counseling. I'm all about creating pathways for better marriages and personal growth. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification button so you do not miss a thing. Now look, when a divorce has been amicable or parents agree to get along for the sake of the children, the awkwardness that is inevitable when kids live in two homes can go reasonably well. But when the divorce was caused by abuse, betrayal or constant conflict, navigating any contact or decision making that involves the kids can become the grounds for another round of fighting. Sadly, it's often the children who suffer the most from the unresolved issues between their parents. Their parents' anger, even hatred, toward each other spills over onto them. Even some of the best-intentioned parents can inadvertently pull on their kids to be allies in their ongoing conflict with the other parent. Each parent attempts to get their kids on their side as a way to justify the divorce. Now, the number one sign that divorced parents aren't doing right by their kids is putting children in the middle of you and your ex's conflict. Yet this is not where they need to be. Making children messengers or putting them in the middle of the fight between the two parents they love can emotionally tear the kids into two. Unless there has been abuse, Children need to be allowed to develop their own opinions about each parent's character. They need to feel safe when with either parent. Both parents need to recognize that the parent-child relationship can be much different from and sometimes even better than the relationship the parents had with each other. Please always remember that what happens now impacts them for a lifetime. Your parenting is powerful. It determines how your children approach life the type of relationships they will have with others, and even how they will parent years from now, passing down generational values. Your children pick up on your daily habits, from how you take care of yourself to the way you listen and respond to their needs, and even how you interact with others. They are watching you like a hawk and learning how to be independent through every move you make. If you're currently experiencing discord with your ex and your children are caught in the middle, then I ask you to listen very carefully. Here is what happens when children are put in the middle. Number one, they think all relationships are conflictual. What you model through your parenting style becomes your children's perspective on how they view their own personal relationships. For instance, if you show your children that it's okay to experience conflict and talk through it peacefully, then they will identify this to be a normal interaction in a relationship. On the contrary, if you have volatile screaming matches with your ex in front of the children, they will assume it is okay to raise their voices to others. Your children are more likely to adopt this aggressive style of communication when approaching conflict. Or they may become completely uncomfortable around conflict and shut down, avoiding it altogether. This will often result in two your children struggling to having healthy adult relationships as they mimic everything you do. They'll find themselves in toxic relationship patterns that do not evolve unless they restructure their belief systems. Your choice of words impacts whether or not your children will develop healthy relationship skills years to come. One's parenting style affects how they view relationships as a whole. And given our relationships are the very core to how we make friends, how we find love, it is the most fundamental skill you can teach your children right from home. If your divorce was bitter, do your very best to resist the urge to drag the kids in your battles. Don't indulge in the common tactics that parents who are hard and angry can fall into. They do hurt the kids. 
they do nothing to resolve your fight with your ex. Ultimately, they keep you stuck in a contentious relationship with your ex instead of freeing you to move on. One of the tactics is called pumping. You know, a parent pumps the kids for information about their other parent's life to collect ammunition for another round of accusations. After every visit or phone call, then, I mean, I get it. Curiosity is only natural. And frankly, some kids may be all happy to share some information with you, but it's not information you need. It's none of your business. Parents who insist that the kids share what they know about how money is being used or how the other parent is spending time looking for something new to dislike. If there is a new romance, the parent insists on learning as much as possible about it. The kids want to please the inquisitor, if only to just stop the relentless questioning. But they don't want to, you know, tattle on their other parents. It's an awful bind. Ola wamwana position, jabo mutadem. Uh-huh. So kondire mo. Auntie Mariam Stolichi. Yine dadi babeda bakolachi. Hey man, come on guys, let's be guided. These are just kids. If you wanted to be in the loop of what your partner does, te wandi novye. Another tactic bitterly divorced parents use is poisoning. The parent misses no opportunity to tell the kids how awful the other parent was and is. They may remind the kids of past and difficult history. They may make sarcastic remarks about the other parent's values and morals. They may inappropriately share legal difficulties they are having with the other parent. The parent hopes to ensure the children's loyalty by making the other side look as bad as possible. The other tactic bitterly divorced parents like to use is privileging. One parent attempts to win the kids' alliance by giving them privileges or relaxing basic rules just to make life harder for the other parent. He or she buys the kids things they want or takes them on vacations or outings the other parent cannot afford. Alternatively, he or she lets the kids get away with not doing chores or homework or lets them play video games all night and doesn't ever discipline them. <clears throat> when the other parent tries to get the kids to behave, the kids, you know, being kids, are bound to say, ah, oh, mom or dad doesn't want me to do that. Why should I have to do it here? You know, the children then think that the parent who is being the more responsible parent is the bad guy. And then there is passing messages. Yeah, or tweaking your parent time schedule through the kids. But using them to adjust your parenting time schedule on, you know, on the fly puts your kids in the middle and forces them to be the recipients of your ex's response. So the next time you find yourself saying, uh, let your mom know that I'll pick you up at 5.30 or did you tell your dad that Friday doesn't work? Stop and pick up the phone. Call your ex directly or at the very least, Send a quick text instead. The disadvantage divorced parents who can't stand to talk to each other first from using kids to pass information back and forth is some children often don't remember accurately or avoid conflict by forgetting to mention it. They may learn they can manipulate their parents by skewing the message. The parents then blame and accuse each other for bad communication. Worse, the kids often get the brunt of parental upset when the parent doesn't like the message. Finally, another way divorced parents frequently put kids in the middle is by intentionally choosing whatever options are least convenient for one another. This is just another way of stirring up trouble with your ex. And there is often no reason for it. I mean, it's uncalled for. Remember too that it doesn't cost you anything to choose options that work for your ex. And sometimes when you model what it looks like to treat one another with respect and general courtesy, the same manner gets returned to you. So avoid standing in the way of whatever is convenient for your ex, just to make him or her miserable. In terms of keeping the peace and demonstrating reasonable interactions with your ex, it's far better to be accommodating when you can and when it makes sense for the kids. Listen, the challenge for parents who divorce bitterly is to love the children more than they hate their former partner. Even when the anger and bitterness are totally justified, it is psychologically damaging to kids to be asked to side with one parent against another. Instead of using the kids as informants or go-betweens or allies in hate, each parent needs to resolve their feelings about their ex and the divorce. Ideally, 
they become the allies in parenting than they were not able to be in their marriage. When they do, everyone can recover from the divorce and move on. Look, I've dealt with a lot of children from broken families. And let me tell you what these kids want from their mom and dad during a divorce. One, they need both of you to stay involved in their lives. Please call, check in, text. When you don't stay involved, they feel like they're not important and that you don't really love them. Two, please stop fighting and work hard to get along with each other. Try to agree on matters related to the kids. When you fight about the kids, they think they did something wrong and it makes them feel guilty. Three, these kids want to love you both and enjoy the time they spend with each one of you. Please support them and the time that they spend with each of you. If you act jealous or upset, they feel like they need to take sides and love one parent more than the other. Another important message these kids wish you knew is to please communicate directly with each other so that they don't have to send messages back and forth between you. And finally, when talking about the other parent, please say only kind things or don't say anything at all. When you say mean and kind things about the other parent, the kids feel like you're expecting them to take your side. These kids want you to remember that they want both of you in their life. They want to be able to count on both mom and dad to raise them, teach them what's important, and to help when they have problems. Parents who do right by their kids after divorce will be able to deal with their emotions in a healthy, productive manner. I have a few don'ts for my dear divorced parents. Don't. Use your children to gather information about your ex. They should not be used as your personal spies. Don't give them support checks to give to your ex. That's a big no-no. Don't plan events that overlap with your spouse's parenting time. It will only create conflict. Don't encourage your children to ask your ex permission to go to places with you or do things with you without first speaking to your ex. You're only setting the children up for disappointment if you do. Don't Ask your children to take sides against your ex. Don't badmouth your ex to the children. Don't turn the children into your sounding board. Talk to a counselor or a friend, not your children. You know, I was once asked by a divorced parent on how much information should be given to a child about their divorce. And um, I feel like you'll need to pick and choose how much to tell your children. Think carefully about how certain information will affect them. Number two, you need to be age aware. In general, younger children need less detail and will do better with a simple explanation, while older kids may need more information. Number three, you need to share logistical information. Do tell the kids about changes in their living arrangements, school or activities, but don't overwhelm them with details. It's unnecessary. Just keep it real. No matter how much or how little you decide to tell your kids, remember that the information should be truthful above all else. The process of forming a new blended family can be a challenging experience, but it's doable. And the secret to a successful co-parenting relationship is one, boundaries. Two, keep the kids out of conflict. Three, stick to business, zero personal stuff. Four, use effective methods of communication. Five, be supportive of your co-parent's role in your child's life. Six, Stick to the parenting schedule. When it comes to successful co-parenting, you and your ex need to work as a team. And finally, when you find a new partner as a divorced parent, there are three relationships you need to take care of. The first relationship is with the other biological parent. Although they may not be your partner anymore, you still have a relationship with them and a responsibility to consider them in parenting decisions in order to have a smooth transition into co-parenting in your new relationship. The second relationship is with your new partner. They may struggle with having a new child or children in their lives and you need to be careful to keep them happy with the dynamic too. The final relationship and the most important one really is with your children. The whole dynamic is set up to keep your child or children happy and make sure you, your ex and your new partner are all benefiting their lives. It's important not to forget your child while navigating co-parenting. Of course, it's not just these three people who need to be kept happy. You need to keep yourself happy too. 
you're just as important and you need to make sure you're adding yourself to the list of your priorities. All these relationships need to be healthy and everyone included during the co-parenting process. When setting boundaries, be sure to consider each person and how they will be affected. For personalized assistance, reach me on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.